welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's podcast episode is looking at a clinical innovation, the use of bone anchored plates for class 2 correction. This was one of my highlight lectures from this year's AAO, given by no less than the famous Hugo de Klerk. Now, Hugo has written and published many times on the use of bone anchored plates for class 3 correction. He now brings his innovation and research and presented it for the first time at the AAO. Just to recap, the podcast is the opinion piece of myself and the orthodontics and summary team. We try our best to ensure that it is as accurate as possible, but may not be 100% representative of the original lecture. So getting back to the lecture, well, what is the innovation? Well, it's a use of bone anchor plates combined with a herbs appliance. And the idea here that Hugo put forward is that we're not getting bony remodeling. We are now obtaining bone modeling, the formation of new bone through orthopedic processes. So how does it work? Well, these bone anchor plates are customized bollard plates placed in the mandibular anterior region. They're transmucosal between the lower canine and first premolar. Now, the herbs is attached, it is modified, it attaches to the upper first molar as is convention. It attaches the lower bollard plates. The upper incisors are proclined if needed to maximize the overjet. And the duration of the use of the orthopedic appliance is 10 months. How does it work? Well, the mandibular body length is the main change that happens. What are the quantitative changes? Between five and seven millimeters is what Hugo has found from his series of 90 patients he has carried his research out on. Whereas a conventional herbs is between 2 and 2.5 millimetres. Now, how does this growth then take place? Well, the forces that are generated are similar to a conventional functional appliance. There's contraction of the pterygoid muscles and stretching of the muscles of mastication. Now, the difference here is that the mandibular ramus is displaced backwards and held in that position, resulting in bone lengthening occurring. What's going on at the glenoid fossa? Well, this condylar displacement that takes place as is commonplace for all functional appliances. And this is where Hugo broke down how this appliance works. Typically, the condyle is displaced only for the first two to three months with a conventional functional appliance. The condyle is displaced, the lower incisors procline. As they procline, the condyle reseats as the activation is reduced on the mandible. Whereas, due to the fixation being on the mandible itself, the condyle remains displaced throughout the duration of the functional appliance therapy using the bone anchored herbs appliance. So for 10 months, it is left in this displaced position. This stimulation, this causes stimulation of the mandib mandible throughout the entirety, resulting in the growth occurring. And that is a theory Hugo put forwards. The lower incisor proclination, this is a really interesting one. Whereas the low incisors typically procline because an appliance is attached to them. In this bone anchored herbs, the attachment is to the mandibular structure itself. The low incisors do not procline. But yet the lowers actually retrocline in the process of correction, which allows maximum stimulation of the skeletal structures for the overjet correction. Rotation of the mandible. And the mandible still rotates as it does in conventional functional appliances. Just to recap, a posterior rotation will reduce the enhancement of the mandibular structures and an anterior rotation will be favorable. For every degree of anterior rotation, a 1.1 millimeter of projection is achieved. Now, what Hugo noticed in his research is that when expansion didn't take place, there was a posterior rotation. When expansion did take place, there was an anterior rotation. So he recommends with this protocol to also include maxillary expansion as part of the process. Upper molar distalization, a conventional understanding of how functional appliance works. Now, Hugo saw this as an unfavorable movement. And he recommended the use of lengthening of the herbs piston to reduce molar distalization. And therefore, the entirety of the correction, or as much as possible, comes from mandibular skeletal lengthening through the orthopedic approach. Hugo concluded by answering a question. Does he recommend the use of bone anchored plates with a functional appliance for correction? He said, no. So surprising, but he gave his reasons and they are good reasons. 
he mentioned how this is a complex process. It is still being pioneered. And he spoke in his own research, the first 30 patients underwent iterations of this protocol. He mentioned it requires customized appliances from the outset and the adjustments through the trial as he's conducted for these patients. It is still yet an idea which has been put into clinical practice, which has still not yet been refined. And of course, the safety and reliability are key aspects for any new clinical item. There was a very dynamic question and answer session, and I'll give you the quick fire answers to it. What were the age of the patients between 13 and 15? And the 15 year olds did seem to have skeletal changes take place. Is it possible to replace the bone anchor plates with mini screws? Hugo said no. The quantity of the force would exceed what a mini screw can withstand. Were there breakages? Yes. He mentioned it is still a herb appliance. Such insight. And there are still breakages that do take place. He was asked the frank question, is the growth maintained or is this just a, another acceleration of mandibular growth? He said he does not know. There has not been long term data on his patient set so far. That concludes this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. It was great to see Hugo de Klerk using his innovative ideas in a different malocclusion. As always, please do subscribe and look forward to next episode.